We all believe that our ancestors were once apes. For millions of years, our planet Earth has been floating in space, and we have come across a lot of myths about the past. I'm sure everyone is keen to know about the mesmerizing evolution of humankind. The early Pleistocene, about one million years ago, was a really interesting time for hominins. Hominins are a group of human ancestors that are closer to us than chimpanzees or bonobos. During these millions of years, the various branches of our evolutionary tree flourished throughout southern and eastern Africa. For millions of years, our planet has been floating in space. Millions of creatures lived on its surface. There were many strange creatures among them, but they only touched our human imagination. Getting close to it is never easy. Homo habilis means handyman, and its discoveries gave it the name because they thought it was responsible for the many tools found near its remains. But does this hominin belong to the genus Homo? Are they more like us than our ancestors? Over the past 50 years, the human family tree has been full. We found new fossils of all sorts of our ancestors and relatives, such as Australopithecus, with brain sizes and limbs proportions nearly identical to those of Homo habilis. And this has led to some investigators to doubt that Homo habilis belonged to us. As more and more fossil ancestors were discovered, our genera became more and more comprehensive, including more and more species less resembling our Homo sapiens. And this is an important issue to think about, because there is some consensus about who belongs to the closest human family to us. For example, we Neanderthals, and even Homo erectus, an ancient world-traveling hominid, all of them are recognized as clear members of the genus Homo. However, behind it are many ancestors who cannot find a place to live, and there is no formal definition of what constitutes a person. So by getting acquainted with other hominids, like those who came before us, Neanderthals and other contemporaries, we can answer the big, interesting, and difficult question of what it means to be human. Traditionally, the definition of who belongs to the genus has come down to what characteristics are considered unique human beings. And when the Lakeys thought of Homo habilis, they used the 1955 definition of Homo. It said that to be a member of the genus, you must have characters in common with the three members of the Homo known in 1995, Homo sapiens, Homo erectus, and Neanderthals. Its origins date back 20 million years ago to frugivory, creatures that lived in Africa trees called proconsuls. They ate fruit and leaves, frolicking in trees far above ground danger. Depending on the species, they ranged in size from monkeys to gorillas. They cared little about the underworld. Proconsuls climbed branches on all fours and looked much like modern macaques. The upper and lower limbs are the same size, began to lean in open palms instead of bent fingers. Quite a few governor fossils have been found in East Africa skulls were primitive. The brain is small and fairly simple, but the relatively small size of the snout and canine teeth suggests non-aggression, one of the key traits leading to intelligence. Lakeys determined that Homo habilis had three things in common with other members of the genus. He walked on two legs and had manual dexterity in making tools. And of course, Homo habilis had these three characteristics. However, 10 years after the discovery of Homo habilis, other human ancestors were found in the same region of Africa, and they also had these characteristics. But 10 million years ago, the African jungle was sparse due to the temperature drop and could not move from tree to tree along the branches. The descendants of Governor Artipithecus were forced to leave the trees and began to move on their hind legs. Their feet were still grippy, but they had special arches that allowed them to move with both legs. The nearly complete skeleton of Artipithecus, named Arti, proves that the creature can walk, though not as easy as we do. Artipithecus arms were knee length, and their hands were half human, half monkey. Artipithecus did not want to leave their usual home, the treetop. They were halfway between humans and apes, but life went on. Trees are few in Africa had become an endless savanna. You come across familiar faces, or at least the face of somewhat familiar Homo habilis, stood just over a meter tall and had a slightly larger brain and smaller teeth than its older relative, Australopithecus. However, he still had longer arms and a prominent lower face, traits generally considered more rudimentary in hominid ancestors. Yet the appearance of walking on two legs was not much different from ours. They all gathered in aim and were able to walk several miles in a row. They formed a close-knit group capable of repelling any danger. Besides, I was curious. Their skull was that of an ape with a protruding snout and sloping forehead. At first glance, our characteristics are hard to tell, but the heads rest on an upright neck. Its fangs are smaller and its brain has grown. Three million years ago, Australopithecus of Forensis of East Africa evolved into the first humans. 2.5 million years ago, our ancestors crossed the Rubicon with brains weighing 700 grams. And all of these discoveries belonged to the variety of Australopithecus, which did not belong to our genus. The most famous of these finds is a specimen known as Lucy. 
unearthed at Hadar, Ethiopia in 1974, she was one of the most complete specimens of Australopithecus ever found. And she gave clear evidence of an upright posture, like having thigh bones that angled inward toward the knee and a more human-like pelvis. Then four years later, a set of fossilized footprints were found in Tanzania, known as Latoli footprints. They were probably left by Australopithecus, further proving that hominoids walked on two legs more than a million years before Homo habilis appeared. Then the definition of the genus had to be changed. Thinking has turned to lifestyle adaptation as a way to determine who belongs to our group, not just physical characteristics. Lifestyle adaptations. Lifestyle adaptations are characteristics related to how a hominid lives its life, including what it ate, how it moved, and where it lived. The first representative of our genus is Homo habilis, handyman. There's a reason why the first person to make stone tools were named Homo habilis. Made of gravel with a few blows, this primitive axe was a true tool still used for butchering meat, chopping wood, defending against predators, and killing prey. Now the man is armed. The life of trees remained immortal, and the savanna contributed to their progress. Perhaps our love of travel and exploration dates back to that time. The world was dangerous, but their heart overcame the difficulties. Intelligence, not force or aggression, protected the first people. The skull of Homo habilis is very similar to that of Australopithecus, but the brain size is now 600 to 800 grams, 1.5 times larger than that of its predecessors. The face got smaller. About 1.5 million years ago, a new species appeared, Homo agaster one who works. They become the terror of the African savanna. Spears and stone tools were unprecedented. Now even the most furious animals are not safe. Humans became hunters. Antelope and elephant skeletons surrounded by stone tools are found in East Africa. Scars on animal bones are visible evidence of a new stage in our evolution. This may be around the same time as when humans first opened fire, but the evidence for this is sparse and unreliable. Many of the earliest human fossils remain in East Africa. The ape heritage of the skull is gone, but the jaw was still large and its brain was half the size of ours. Their height and physique were the same as those of modern humans, and their bodies, except for the head, were not much different from ours. They settled all over Africa and were the first to cross borders. The final step was the colonization of the planet. So they took the step and vast areas of the planet were conquered by their new masters. But not immediately. The planet did not welcome them wholeheartedly. Nature should not be underestimated. Life wasn't always strewn with roses. This is evidenced by the remains of individuals with traces of the predator's teeth. But it was difficult to give birth to and nature the mind. Homo heidelbergensis was the first prehistoric human to have the same brain size as today. Their faces were still furious, but their eyes shone with a new light of reason. They built a shelter, buried the dead, and created some crude but first works of art. Humanity has passed a long and difficult evolutionary path. What is the future preparing for? Reason makes us responsible for ourselves. Now, everything is left up to us.